Have you been wanting to try out the beautiful method of bullet journaling, but weren't sure in what book to start or how to implement your own personal style to it? A special book that organizes your life, your thoughts, and memories while still maintaining that creative element of decorating and journaling on the pages. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I take an old book and turn it into a bullet in a journal in a fun and functional way. Before you start bullet journaling, you need to decide what kind of book or journal you would like to use. Sometimes it can be quite overwhelming as there's lots of options out there, but I always recommend trying to make your own. I went to my local thrift store and I picked out this book that costs me 75 cents. It's not in the roughest shape, but it does have a little bit of staining, but it's a nice hardcover book that will be durable and will have the structure to last for the years to come and it needs to be given a new purpose. Now flipping through the pages, I realized it was upside down, but this book belonged to someone already. It's pre-loved and now it needs to be going on its journey to become my new bullet journal. The reason why I chose this book also was because of the sketches throughout the book, little doodles here and there, which I will preserve as I'm going to be using the functionality of a bullet journal on top of book pages. So I'm going to be making my own little concoction of a bullet journal as well as a little sketchbook. So in order to cover up your book, you want to use some decorative papers. I'm going the more vintage route, so I'm choosing vintage dictionary pages, some Italian paper. You can use wrapping paper, scrapbook paper. Here I'm using some old ledger from the 1800s. I really appreciate the use of old script and papers that have been forgotten in the past. You can also use new papers that mimic that vintage style. I have in my shop some printables that I created, scanning in some old documents, creating some collage sheets for you to use inside of your journal or on the cover. You want to make sure you choose papers that inspire you to actually use your journal. So now that you have your papers chosen, you want to make sure you cut them out into two identical pieces, one for the front cover and one for the back cover. To adhere your decorative papers onto your book, I recommend using Mod Podge, or you can use a glue stick. I recommend the Uhu stick as it's the king of glue sticks in my opinion. When you're using Mod Podge in a brush, you want to make sure that you're applying it evenly onto the cover. This will prevent air bubbles when you place your paper and you spread out the glue. This step is very easy if you're using Mod Podge or a glue stick as you're just gluing on your paper to your base. And then you want to turn it over and cut around the excess paper as we're going to be folding it inwards, gluing it down so that our edges of our book are covered completely with paper. This creates a beautiful finished look to your book, makes it look as if you purchased it with that design, and you can decide if you want to decorate the back as well, or if you want to mix and match and leave it a little bit eclectic. Now it's time to move on to your spine. Now you can leave it as is if you really enjoy the original spine of your book, but I'm going to be covering it up with some vintage ledger. I just want to measure it to size, cut it down, and then fold it in half so that it wraps around my spine really easily when I go into glue. Make sure you use the same adhesive that you used on the cover, and you wanna work in sections. So I like to start with the front. Once that has been glued on, I like to move to the middle of the spine, and then once that has been secured, I like to move on to the back. You wanna make sure there are no air bubbles or rips that will cause your paper to tear in the future. You can also use a bone folder, the edge of your scissors, or even a pencil to go within those lines, you crease them, and make sure there's no air bubbles and everything has been adhered perfectly. You can stop here, but I wanted to decorate my cover a little bit more and make it seem not so perfect. So I grabbed some vintage dictionary paper and I just added a little snippet of it on the spine and it peaks on the front and on the back as well. And I like that ripped edge that I left on the front. It just gives it a nice eclectic feel to it. And now I'm sorting through my labels. These are found in my shop as a printable version, both with script and unwritten so that you can write whatever you want on there. 
I'm just choosing which bullet journal printable I wanted to use and I decided to cut out the B from my collage paper. This is included in the vintage paper digital in my shop and I'm going to use the B as the B in bullet journal since I will never be able to draw a B like that. I thought it was really quirky and really fun. Which is exactly how I want to treat my bullet journal. I want it to be functional but quirky and fun for me to experiment and to use. So I cut off the B, I snipped it off from my label, and it just says bullet journal. <laughs> if I added an M it would be mullet journal, <laughs> but this is a bullet journal. So I'm gluing on the B with that beautiful typography, I love it. And it ends up looking like an old book. But yet when you open it up, it will be your bullet journal, which is so fun. So then on the inside pages, in order for me to cover up our wonkiness that we left with the paper, I like to cut up some paper. This is from my vintage paper set in my shop. I'm just using my trusty Uhu stick and I'm gluing it right on top of the paper that we left uncovered. This gives your bullet journal a really nice finished look and it basically mimics end papers of a vintage book. So now what I like to do to cover up that black edge that's left in a very awkward way, I'm taking some thick washi. You can use any decorative tape that you want, even packaging or masking tape. And then with an X-Acto knife, you want to cut right in the crease in the middle to take off that paper that had the rest of the washi stuck on it, and you're left with a nice crisp edge for your end papers, or the back of your front and back covers. I really like this finished look, it secures everything into place. And then I like to add a little mini label inside to label what bullet journal number this is as I'm trying to implement this for the rest of my life. So we'll see how that goes. But if you guys enjoyed this video and you're interested to see how I use a book and turn it into a bullet journal, there will be more episodes in this series where I show you how to decorate on top of book pages to functionally plan your life in a fun way. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and of course, until next time, I hope that your day is filled with an abundance of peace and love. All of the printables used will be mentioned below at the link in my Etsy shop, and if you try this bullet journal alteration from a vintage book, definitely let me know. So have a great and awesome creative day, and I will talk to you guys very soon.